Is the Toudini 21 not ready? Oh my, let's cover some features, starting with Gaussian splits, which are now natively supported. So to import and render them, let's first of all start out in an empty scene. Let's drop down a geo node, let's dive inside, and let's load one split in using a file node. And by the way, if you want us to cover the generation process of Gaussian splits in more detail in the future, please leave a comment below. I kind of want to explore the different options of generating them. But for now, I'm just going to load one in that I took at my local botanical garden. This one right here that you'll also find in the scene file downloads. And this is what we're getting currently, which does not look anything like a Gaussian split. So let's first of all make sure that it actually is a Gaussian split and we can do that on the geo spreadsheet and you should see a ton of these attributes right here. This is f underscore dc and f underscore res. This is your telltale sign that you actually have a Gaussian split here. However, these are currently not attributes that Houdini wants and for this we can use the new bake g split node which takes those attributes and converts them into Houdini attributes. Now, the options here are mostly self-explanatory. You're going to leave this checked if you used nonlinear SRGBs or your typical images to train your Gaussian split. You use this to convert those attributes into something Houdini can use. You can also check this if you want the special features of Gaussian splitting, so actual reflections or refractions in the data as well. You can check this if you want to make your scene lighter and delete the original attributes, we don't need them anymore. And you can leave this checked if you want faster rendering, but don't necessarily need shadows. With this done, I can also orient my split correctly using a transform node, bringing this in and rotating it 180 degrees around the x-axis and now we can finally zoom in and see that I Gaussian splatted a flower in here. However, this is currently not looking like a Gaussian splat, this is looking like a point cloud, so what's missing in here? What's missing here is Karma and Karma XP, because this currently is the only way to view this as an actual Gaussian splat. So to do this, let's drop down a null, let's call this Karma, and directly below it, let's drop down a lob network, or you could also do this in the stage context, of course. And inside here, I want to drop down a sub import node, load in this karma null that I generated. Let's also call this G split. And now, if I switch from perspective view to the karma XPU view, and we need to be in the karma XPU view for this, and wait a bit for this to cook, we now have a typical Gaussian splat view in here. And the view performance is decently fast, at least on my machine. However, we're not just loading in a Gaussian splat into Houdini to just view it, to just render it. Now nah, we want to do a bit more with this. So why not for now try to add a little vellum simulation to this. And everything I'm doing now is very much inspired by Stefan Helbing's talks at the previous off conferences, so definitely give these a watch as well. But to turn this into a vellum simulation, what I first of all want to do is I want to isolate this flower right here because I want to simulate this and not the whole scene. So to do just that, I want to bring in a group, a group that I called flower, and I created this simply using the keep and bounding regions option right here. And this is a group called flower and a point group like this. Then I can branch out from here and I can delete everything but my flower. And let's make a little more room in here, something like that. So now we have this part isolated. And I also want to create a little reference null in here as well. We're going to need this later. Let's call it cloud because this is a point cloud. And then let's turn this into an actual geometry that I can use with vellum. And the easiest way, at least for now, that I found here is to use the particle fluid surface node. Let's wire this in here. We're going to set the particle separation way lower and this is something that you just have to play with, what looks nice in the end. For me, what worked nicely for this Gaussian split is this value right here, 0 0.001. And then we can also experiment with the method and since this is Houdini 21, why not try the new neural point surface method in here. And after waiting for this to cook, this is what we get. There's still quite a lot of geo for vellum, so let's quad remesh it next to make this a bit more manageable. So let's drop down the quad remesh node, and this should work, however it currently doesn't. And this is because we are outputting a polygon soup, and we want to output surface polygons like this. And now I think this is a lot more manageable for vellum. So now it's time to build a vellum simulation, and I think we built about a billion vellum simulations on this channel, so I'm going to rush through this. So I'm going to just paste in a ton of nodes that you'll also find in the scene file downloads, and to quickly walk through them, I first of all get another null in here, another reference, 
And then I'm using a bunch of these point groups in here to group everything that I don't want to simulate in a pin group, like this. And then I'm turning my actual geometry into a fairly stiff vellum cloth. And I'm also using my pin group in here. And this is the stiffness that I used. And then what I actually want to simulate are some droplets hitting my flower. So these are these droplets right here, which I'm also moving a bit up. I put them in a group called droplets, which I'm going to use later. Then I'm turning this into a vellum tetrahedral soft body. This stiffness right here and this density. Then I'm giving it a bit of initial velocity using an attribute adjust vector node like this. And then I'm just merging both of my vellum geometries together. And this goes into a vellum solver where I set the constraint iterations fairly high for my stiff cloth. And I set the time scale to 0.1 to have a sort of slow-mo simulation going on here. So finally, if we run this, we get our typical vellum result. So our droplets should collide with our leaves in a second. Yep. And they're also deforming them nicely. This is all working. So what I can then finally do is split this into two geo streams. First of all, on the left one, my droplets, which I'm going to transform down a tiny bit because our quadri mesh in here added a bit of thickness to all our leaves, which I'm offsetting in here. And then also later for motion blur, I'm applying my time scale that I set on my vellum solver in here to my velocity vectors as well because otherwise they would be way too large and we would have way too much motion blur. And then I also take my animated quad geometry in here and I'll put this as well. So we're good to go, we have a simulation. Now we have to apply this to our Gaussian splats. And this is actually pretty darn easy because all we have to do is we have to move up here again. And before we jump into Karma, what we want to do is we want to drop down a point deform node, wire this in. And then we have to drop in some object merge nodes and we want to reference, well, first of all, the quad geometry, this one right here, and then also our animated quad geometry, the one that got out from a vellum sim. We'll drop this in like this and this goes into the third input. And then on a point deform node, we just want to deform our flower groups. So let's just quickly activate this as well up here. And then the defaults should work fine. And yeah, we have now a simulation applied to a Gaussian split. So the final thing that we should do is we should drop down a point velocity node in here to also apply some velocity to a Gaussian splits. And the defaults in here are fine. We want to compute from deformation and we want to have a one frame sample like this. So then with this done, we can finally jump into a lob network and I'm just quickly going to drop in the rest of the setup that I built in here. Again, you can check out the scene file downloads for this. So again, I'm importing my Gaussian splits up here. I'm also importing my droplets. I'm building a very simple water material in here and applying it to my droplets. I'm also dropping down a dome light that is sort of similar to the scene I captured here to get some reflection on those drops. And then I'm just generating a camera. I'm using this mess of nodes in here to add a little turntable animation around my camera. And then finally in the camera render settings, what we mainly want to do in here is go to camera effects and turn on velocity blur for both standard velocity blur and also instance velocity blur. And this is all we need to do to get a sort of interactive, nice looking Gaussian splatting scene in Houdini. So I hope you find this helpful. And it's off to the next set of topics inside Houdini 21. And if you want to help us drop everything we're doing and start recording as soon as a new Houdini version drops, please consider becoming a patron of ours. Big thanks going out to all our existing patrons. Without you, there would be no Houdini 21 coverage on this channel today. Cheers, guys.